can't say I'm looking forward to this one today because it's like minus three outside and I've got to go out there and fit this Maxton front splitter. Now, if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. Look back through my playlist because I've been fitting the Maxton kit bit by bit to my car. Now, first thing we're gonna do is go over the stuff that comes with the splitter and that is this beautiful installation manual which gives you lots of helpful tips. However, I'm gonna be demonstrating how this goes on the car today. And we've also got 14 bolts, washers and nuts in this bag here and a delightful Maxton sticker. Artwork. Mate, I should be charging rent for this thing. Look at the size of it. It's looking like a Maxton warehouse in there. Just prolonging the inevitable. But before we get out there, let's take a quick look at this splitter. How beautiful. So this is quite an informative manual. It does say here that the edge line of the splitter needs to go to the bumper. So I'm presuming it's this lovely line all the way around here needs to line up with the bumper. The general overview is you want to keep the screws approximately three centimeters, it says here, uh, from the front to the bumper when you're screwing in. Otherwise, you're going to have to glue it in the front gap. And I don't want to be using glue, no one likes using glue. So essentially, we just need to make sure that this is going to be screwed straight in. Probably where these holes are here is a good guide point. I say holes, I mean indents, before I get called out on YouTube. Then we want to mark out the screw holes apparently every 15 centimeters um, across here, and then use a six mil drill bit to apply. Don't forget, we've got to go all the way around here yet as well. But first, let's get outside and brave the cold weather. Well, by the way, Maxton does recommend that two people fit this splitter because you've got to hold it up and line it up. However, I'm a Lone Ranger. I don't need any help with this. I'm just going to crack on and do it with the help of a box. I'm ready. See what I mean? First thing we're going to do, jack the car up. Got the box over here, look. That's my uh, second pair of hands. And what I'm going to do first is show you, like under here, so under this side of the bumper, if you line this up, look, like that, you can see. And if I take you underneath, you can see it's got like the cut arounds for the original screws that are already on the bumper. So, to make my life easier, I'm going to put one wood screw to hold it temporarily here, this side, and then I'm going to go the other side and put another wood screw over there, so both sides are up, and then I'm going to go around and drill all the holes, and then put all the bolts through and take the wood screws out and replace them with the bolts. Right, line that up, and then I'm going to use my drill to do a pilot hole. Just a normal screw. So that'll keep that side in for now. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same. Job done. Right, for safety I've put on the axle stands both sides. Right, so obviously I wanted to see how this lines up first. And under here, this under tray, we're going to want to take this out. So, there's a few Torx screws. I'm going to whip them out. Hopefully this tray then removes so I can get my hand up the back to get these nuts and bolts in. Right, these are T25 screws. So there's just three torque screws which are taken out now. Now I can pull underneath the bumper and look in. Right, so I wanted to use these nuts and bolts that come with it. However, this tray, let me see if I can show you. Can you pull that back? Where you need to be screwing them, it needs to be right at the front of the splitter, otherwise it's gonna be pulling down, so. Because I can't get a nut right in there, it's going to be really hard to try and get a nut in there and tighten it um, right at the front. I'm going to go and get some self-drilling screws, but I'm going to get some seeker flex as well. So it'll be stuck and glued. Because you don't really want to screw this on its own, you want to have some glue with it as well. If you can't do the nuts and bolts right at the front. So I think 
I'm gonna have to go and get some seek flex <laughs> and some screws. I think with these things, it's not really a one size fits all. Like obviously Maxton will send out all the nuts and bolts of every kit, but some cars aren't gonna, they're not all the same, do you know what I mean? So you're gonna have to make it work. And in this case, I've made the executive decision. I want to seek a flex this with screws now. So I think that'll be fine anyway. See now this is the beauty about doing your own jobs at home. Obviously you could pay a garage to, to do it for you, get it up in the air and just fit it first time, but you know what? Why not have a go yourself? Um, obviously the last hour I've spent checking it all out isn't wasted in my opinion. I feel like it's a good thing. Right, okay, so I've secured the goods and I've got some Seeker Flex. I've kept it in front of the blowers on the way back to warm it up because it is so cold. This needs to be installed really between 10 degrees and 25. Um, so we've got that. Went to Halfords and got some screws. I've got two sets. I've got these stainless steel rust proof crosshead ones, right? However, I also picked up quite a few packs of these flanged ones in black. They didn't have the T25 Torx ones, which I thought they did have online, but they didn't have them in the shop. So I'm gonna fit these, these, and also a mixture of these bolts, depending on how it feels. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to where we left off and carry on. This is the most satisfying part of the video. First thing I want to do is clean under here now because obviously it's going to be seeker flexed on, so I want to make sure that's nice and clean underneath there. Right, instead of using them screws I used earlier for the side, I'm going to use one of these new black ones and screw that back on the side here. Let's make sure it's nicely lined up on the edge of the bumper, like so. Now the next thing I'm going to do is seeker flex all the way like along here and along this line here and around here and then as soon as it's got the seeker flex on here I'm going to push it up into place and then drill some screws in up underneath. You want to make sure you're wearing gloves for the seeker flex because if it gets on your hands it's a nightmare to get off. That's exactly what it's like. too thick so I've just given this a final wipe over but it's impossible to keep spotlessly clean so like I said it's going to bead it all the way along here and around and around this side as well I recommend you get a good silicon gun Right, so as you can see, <laughs> sorry my gun is actually proper broken, but I've got it on this lip all the way here, and some on here, and then up around on the inside there, and then same again that side. Yours will look a lot neater than mine if you've got a good gun. Right, so what I'm going to do next is get under there with some screws, push it up, hold it, and then screw it. There's the first one on. I'll just show you for reference where exactly these are going. So, like one here, and I'm going to go all the way along across there. Right, that is the front splitter all screwed in along the front with the seeker flex. I want to secure this even more obviously here, but as you can see that I've screwed all the way along the front lip and then I've gone all the way around the sides as well. Right, that is it all installed. The original nut and bolts that came with it were a nightmare to try and get in, so I've only managed to get a couple in there, but I've used the stainless steel screws to, to finish off. But yeah, it's all on there. It's all looking tight.
Okay, so the front split is all on. I've just taken the car over the flyover at 70 miles per hour, and believe it or not, the front splitter didn't fly off. So the screws and the seeker flex has done its job, even though it's very cold out and it is solid. Anyway, let's go out and do the reveal. <laughs> Right, so let me know what you guys think of this front splitter. Is it a yes or a no, or a maybe, or a never? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I was pretty unsure as to whether or not I wanted one, but because I'm going for the rest of the kit, I thought why not just try and finish the car off. We've still got other bits to do on it. Um, still got some rear side skirts to go on, and <laughs> something else which I'm not gonna reveal today, because uh, I'm gonna leave that one a secret. That is on there, that ain't going anywhere. I did use quite a lot of screws and obviously the Seeker Flex, you can see that is solid as. I'm not gonna lie, in the last few minutes, that has grown on me. I actually think it's a must have now, I love that. <laughs> it's amazing how something can change your opinion the more you keep looking at it. So just a few final words before I finish up this video, and that is about the installation. Obviously, in an ideal world, you would like to nut and bolt this all the way through. However, for me doing it at home with just some axle stands and a jack, it was pretty difficult to even get my hand up behind that bloody plastic panel. And to be honest, the way I've done it, I think is fine. The Seeker Flex is really strong stuff. I've bloody Seeker Flexed it all the way around. Unfortunately, my silicon gun broke it's just typical and the car was on axle stands all my stuff's in my garage which isn't at home and it are oh, there so <laughs> i've seeker flexed it screwed it it's all on there it's solid it's not going anywhere i'm going to keep an eye on it anyway just to be on the safe side like everything because at the end of the day it is a car and there is a lot of wind resistance underneath so i'll just keep an eye and make sure it's fine and i'm sure it will be but apart from that i hope you found this video useful hope it's given you some sort of idea into what is required if you want to fit one of these maxton front splitters and also it lets you know what it looks like on the car I, at the beginning, was unsure. I think I've been swayed now by the, by the end of this video because I've been looking at it and I think the car does look good. So, big up Maxton on this one because obviously they're the ones that design and, you know, supply this stuff. Um, I'm not endorsed by them. I bought it as most of my stuff. No one ever sends me freebies. I've had a few over the years, but unfortunately, I'm just a normal person that goes out and buys stuff and shares it with you guys. So you can obviously get some sort of idea yourself, but that's gonna be it now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon in the next one. Bye for now. P.S. Wrap up, it's cold out there. Looks like a snow plow. <laughs>